Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about doing a mirrored shield or reflective, we're going to do super sky earth non-metallic metal and we're going to use that on Sigvald shield, famously he has a mirror shield and to understand this and what we're going to do we've got to talk about the principles of sky earth non-metallic metals. Up in the top left there you'll see I have a traditional take on sky earth non-metallic metal. Blue, at the top, some kind of brown at the bottom. I've seen lots of people do this kind of style. The problem with it is it isn't realistic. That's a real picture of a chrome ball right there down at the bottom, okay? Something that's really that reflective isn't just going to reflect the sky and the ground, which is how I see a lot of these things done, where it's just sort of blue and brown. But there's not many places in our world, unless you're standing in the middle of a quite empty desert, that's just blue and brown. So instead, we're going to make something much more like the bottom. So I've started with just some kind of a green. The colors here aren't, aren't relevant. The important part is you have to think of a scene. And then you've got to figure out what are the core elements you're going to capture of that scene when it's twisted, when it's put onto the shape like the shield, in this case, which is a round uh, convex shape. Okay. So I started with just some green mixed with a little black. And I, you notice I painted in tiny little lines, just doing little slashes. Basically, I'm just making trees. This entire experiment is very much like doing something Bob Rossi. You're just painting a scene, but it's got to be somewhat twisted, and the light needs to be dominant. So the trees themselves are pretty easy because they're, they need to be darker than normal. You can't paint anything in its normal colors because everything is going to be blown out by the chrome reflection of the light. So I created some little sort of treescapes, just kind of so the ideas of where I want them. It doesn't matter, they don't need to be perfect. I can paint over them later. Then I took some pure white and placed where I wanted the sun. Then I started slowly integrating blue and working it around kind of the edge. The key here to understand is that where the sun or the light source is reflecting in the shield is going to be basically pure white. Okay. And the reason for that is because it's reflecting the pure light itself. Now what I'm doing is going in, getting darker versions, and reinforcing the centers of the tree. And by the way, almost this entire thing is going to be lots of back and forth work. Because you have to create this vaguely fuzzy image. Even this chrome ball isn't going to reflect it perfectly. Right? Well, in this case, this chrome shield. So there's going to be some diffusion of the light. You know, this shield's especially fun because it also has all these other little weird shapes in it and stuff. So I took and started integrating a little bit of blue. Now, in this case, I was actually using some turquoise color and some blue-green from Vallejo. It's the same colors I used on his cloak and on other parts of the miniature to make it you know, actually fit and feel like it belongs. And you notice, again, when I put these colors in, a lot of what I'm doing is stippling and then spreading it out. Notice that I'm not trying to paint a smooth layer. I'm trying to create the impression of a sky with clouds and little, you know, images and light refractions in it, and so on. Then I grabbed here some ice yellow, and around the edge, in between where the sun is pure white and the sky has blue, I'm working in some very thin yellowish tones, again, to capture the light, the being a warm sun being reflected, okay? Now I'm gonna let all that dry because I worked a lot of wet on wet paint there. And when I came back, I actually went ahead and blacked out all the other little lines, the things that aren't reflective or that aren't gonna be sort of chrome. That way I could really see what I'm working with. So now it's time to refine. And the first thing I need to do is make sure that the uh, that the trees themselves are well-defined. You have to be able to see the edges of these things. What's gonna make it feel realistic when you're doing some kind of mirrored reflection like this is if you feel like all the distinct elements are still distinct. And what that means is with those very dark trees, I've gotta have some bright light in between them. So I've gotta lighten up my blue just a little bit and start creating the space in between all of the trees. So you can see each individual little tree. And you're gonna notice I do this 
Several times I go back and forth. I also, at the same time, will start taking some of the green of the tree and mixing it with a little white so it's quite uh, fuzzy, and I'll start tracing the edge of it in between the tree and the sky. So it looks like that's the thinner part of the tree that light is passing through more easily. Now you'll notice I didn't really do a ground here, and part of that is the angle of this thing, okay? The, with Sky Earth Non-Metallic Metal, it's about the angle of the piece versus where the ground is orientated. So as much as a five degree upward facing means you'll see almost no ground. In other words, like if zero degrees is straight up and down vertical, if that shield is tilted even five degrees away, then you see almost no ground. Now, this is certainly tilted back. The nature of Sigvald's model here is that he's kind of in a reverse position with his arm back, so the shield is angled up. But it also is a convex shape and so has this under part that's, that's tucked down. Instead of painting the ground, I'm going to rely, and initially, I'm going to let the sky kind of be where it needs to be. I'm going to let the trees fall where they need to be. And then once I'm happy with all of that, I'm just going to kind of fill in some of the ground. So now what I'm doing is just reinforcing that light and those clouds. Now I'm getting my tree separated, feeling pretty good about that but we still need to keep working it. So now I've got some kind of brown tones and stuff like that. And what we're gonna do is now I'm gonna fill in some of those ground, some of that ground. What I'm gonna do is make it so it looks like there's almost paths in between the trees. So I'm gonna work it into the open spots that don't have uh, color yet in between there. And uh, I'm gonna be very light touch about it. I just wanna create a little bit of ground on the bottom. And then you'll notice it's right back to the sky as I continue to reshape and refine the image that these trees are reflecting. You'll also notice that I, because of the shape of the shield, the trees are all pointed toward the middle. Again, think back to that chrome ball we saw earlier. Things were pushed at an odd angle because it's reflecting them on a circular surface, right? Uh, it's not a flat plane. It's not going to reflect it flatly. Instead, it's going to distort the image like a funhouse mirror. Right? And so constantly what I'm doing here is back and forth working the interior heart of the tree and making it darker and darker and darker and infusing more and more uh, black, or in this case, I'm actually using Payne's gray ink, but it's dark blue-black ink. And that's because against the light, those would be almost completely silhouetted and any color they have will basically be irrelevant, okay? You need the hint of the color more than you need the actual color. So it's, you know, I could do this completely without green, but you do want a little bit of it. Some of that's gonna come out. And the same reason I'm, everything here you'll notice is extremely desaturated, right? Because the white light on this chromed surface is going to be blowing everything out. So now it's just a matter of refine, refine, refine as I continue to reshape those things. Make sure the trees have a tree shape, make sure the sky is well-defined in between each piece, and just continue slowly refining all of the different elements. Okay, so I've covered the entire model in some plastic putty. It's basically just black silly putty. I've got out the airbrush and with a six to two thin ratio of six thinner to two drops of white ink, I'm just slowly applying a very light, 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 light coat. A little bit of glaze of some white. And you'll notice what that did is it fuzzed everything out. And that was the goal. See how now everything looks fuzzy. What that did is that gave me that soft edge to everything that I wanted where the light is dominating. Now, it's a little too strong, but that was a necessary step because now when I go back in and fill out the center of the tree, it's gonna feel a lot more smooth to where there's this fuzzy outer edge of the tree that the light is filtering through. So, as with anything in miniature painting, if it's worth doing once, it's worth doing multiple times. And so now I'm just reinforcing the deep shadows of the tree. Uh, a lot of this is 
whenever you're painting this scene, you're basically painting a distorted version of a canvas painting. So the trick to high reflectivity, things like chrome, is I see a lot of people trying to do just the blue and brown, but that feels eminently false because high reflection things reflect the world around them. When you've got a perfectly shiny car, like a perfectly shiny black car, or something like that, it's super high gloss. It doesn't just reflect blue sky and brown earth. You see the pavement and the cars parked next to it and somebody walking by and a tree in your neighbor's yard or whatever. So the key here is you have to create some kind of scene that's going to be reflected. That's what's going to make the sky earth reflection actually feel like it's reflecting something more than some generic blue fade into a brown fade is ever going to matter. Because again, unless the person is standing in the middle of an endless desert, it's just not going to sell. So what we're doing now is we're just reinforcing the centers of those trees. And then I'm again going through and reshaping everything. Now, a couple of times here, you're going to see me make some hard pivots. And that's because I did a sketch of this first on a piece of paper, but you know, as I went to recreate on the shield and being in three dimensions, some things I didn't quite like as much. I didn't quite like my tree placement as much, so you're going to see me swap kind of the tree placement around, make one taller, one shorter, so that it felt a little more realistic. All my trees were a little too samey in height, which was weird. Like trees have a very, you know, like trees are naturally very different sized. So it was kind of strange that all of a sudden I had one set that all of my trees were exactly the same height. And that was making it feel false. Sometimes it can be just those little things because nature is very random. It's very organic. Uh, you know, trees are just a bunch of different sizes. There's big trees and little trees. And if your uh, image doesn't reflect that, then it will ring hollow to people. Uh, so now we're just getting the center of that done. I went ahead and took the putty off because I'm done with my airbrushing step. And now it's time to bring this bad boy to a close. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I have a very, very, very thin, deep blue black. Because when the chrome reflects off of the light, it doesn't just reflect a normal blue. It reflects this very deep sort of color. Uh, the color of basically the steel without the light touching it. Uh, so it just has this very natural deep blue steel tone. And so I was just doing a nice, very controlled glaze of that around the edges of the shield, outside of the light, further up the contrast of the light. Now I'm just reinforcing some of my yellow. So again, I grabbed some of that ice yellow to just get a little bit of that worked back in there. And you can see that that then pops out that deep blue even more because it helps to reinforce that contrast, right? Now I'm just going ahead and reinforcing some of the main trees, the main reflections that are closer would be more clear than the things on the side. So I need to build those up. I need to reinforce some of the earth and the earth tones. Uh, at the bottom to make sure that they uh, have the appropriate light. So the earth that's directly near the bottom of the shield, that would be in, in effect closest to the figure itself. Um, I'm adding a little bit of a light color too, and then I'm gonna put a little brown glaze over. That way it feels like it's there's more light gathering near the figure. Uh, so effectively, just as the, the light needs to be opposing each other. So the lightest earth is on the opposite side of the shield from the lightest sky right where the sun is and uh by pushing this up some these kind of tiny little refinements this is what's going to help me to sell the overall illusion that the shield is reflecting some scene out in nature right and that the thing is perfectly mirrored you could you can play with this forever constantly applying little glazes adjusting colors all those sorts of things what I'm gonna do here is I wanna make it even a little more uh, realistic. So we'll add a couple birds that happen to be flying in the sky. Just two little quick birds. But for the most part there, I'm pretty happy with that. That's a pretty much done shield. Uh, I adjusted a few more things off camera, but for the most part, this is it. 
So there you go. There'll be some images coming up at the end so you can see what this looks like when it's all done. Uh, our reflective pastoral mirrored shield. But I do hope you enjoyed this. Again, the keys are imagine a scene and then bring it to a distorted life. Give it a like if you liked this. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. If you've got any questions on this technique, drop them down below. But as always, I very much appreciate you watching this one, and we'll see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.